Hi, Cat's Cradle here. This is another video in my ongoing series of how to make uh, things you would normally purchase ready-made, how to make them from scratch in your own home. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to make chocolate syrup. There's no uh, reason you need to purchase that ready-made when it's so easy to do at home. You start by adding cocoa and sugar to your uh, pot and here I'm just scraping it out of the bowl. Stir it up to get it combined. You need a pinch of salt, of course, as always. I'll post the recipe below. And I turned my element on about medium high. And I'm just stirring the ingredients dry here to try to get them combined before I begin adding the liquid. Now you might not know this, but if you fill a water line up to the top ring on a pint jar, that's exactly a cup and a half. And that's what you need for this recipe. So I'm pouring a little water in just to try to moisten the uh, cocoa and sugar and salt and keep adding and stirring. Uh, this, this step isn't just isn't really important because once your element begins to heat up or, or your flame, if you're using a gas stove, it's going to uh, loosen all that up and it will combine nicely. This is the same jar I'm going to store it in. I have these nice plastic lids that fit the uh, canning jars perfectly and that's what I'm going to store the uh, chocolate syrup in. So I'm just mixing it together here. It takes a little bit to mix it because of the surface tension uh, between the water and the cocoa. But like I said, as it heats up it gets increasingly easy to stir. I like making this as opposed to buying the ready-made because uh, the ingredients I'm putting in are water, sugar, cocoa, salt, and vanilla, which is all I think is necessary to make syrup, which you would hope the company would, uh, of the commercially bought product would put in, but they put in so much other stuff, namely high fructose corn syrup is the first ingredient of this one that I'm showing on, on the stove here. Corn syrup is the second ingredient and then lots of additives to make it shelf stable, which we just don't need. You bring the whole thing to a boil, and I boil it hard for about one minute, about a, maybe a minute and a half. If you want a thicker syrup, you could uh, cook it longer, but you do need to stir it constantly because cocoa will burn. So now I remove it from the heat to add my vanilla, and that's a good practice for any time you're gonna add um, a liquid flavoring like vanilla or uh, any of the others, rum flavoring or butter flavoring because they have alcohol and you just don't want to cause that to flame up. So stir it all in really good. And if you're using a canning jar, you don't even need to wait to pour it up because the canning jars uh, are tempered glass and you just generally don't have a problem with breakage. It's, I'm going to use two jars in order to hold this recipe. One is a pint jar and the other is a half pint jar. It just fits perfectly into those two. I'm going to put the, after it cools, the plastic lids on it and I'm saving out just a little bit so Prepare can give it a taste test. You can see that she had her glass of milk and her spoon at the ready. She could smell from the den that I was making chocolate syrup and she came in so that she could get a taste. All right Prepare, let's give it a little taste test and tell me what you think. Really good. I like it better than store-bought. It tastes better than store-bought. Yeah. There's no artificial flavor, is there? No. And it, it does taste better. Awesome. There you go. Homemade chocolate syrup with no high fructose corn syrup and no corn syrup, no additives, no stabilizers, just good wholesome ingredients that you put together yourself. I hope you try it and I hope you like it. It's really delicious. Cat's Cradle.